Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today we're tackling a really challenging situation in biotech, uh, focusing on Intellia Therapeutics, that's sticker NTLA. Right. This is a company built on, frankly, an incredible promise, using CRISPR gene editing, the Cas9 system, to potentially offer one-time cures for diseases we previously thought were just incurable. It's revolutionary stuff, or at least it was looking that way until October 27th, 2025. Mm -hmm. That's the day everything changed for Intelia. Yeah. Our analysis today really centers on that crisis. We saw the stock just collapse uh, down over 45% before the market even opened. 45%. It's staggering. And this isn't just a blip. You know, it's yeah. a major safety event that really calls into question their whole approach. Okay, so that's the core tension we need to explore for you today. You've got this technology with, I mean, almost unimaginable potential to change medicine, but can it actually survive a single catastrophic life-threatening safety problem in a key trial? That's the billion dollar question, literally. We're gonna dig into what's left. You know, the bull case arguments, like their, their strong balance sheet, uh, the fact that they have another drug that isn't affected, but we have to weigh that against this just devastating clinical hold. All right, let's dive into chapter one, business understanding. So set the scene for us. Before the drop, October 24th, Intellius is trading around $25.60, looking pretty solid. Yep, things were looking okay. Then came the news over the weekend. A temporary pause on dosing patients in their big phase three trials, the magnitude studies. And the reason? The reason was one patient in the trial for their lead drug, uh, Nexigurin Zeclumarin. Let's call it Nexi. We had Nexis. This patient experienced grade four liver toxicity. Now, for anyone listening who isn't familiar with clinical grades, grade four is serious. It's classified as life-threatening. Life-threatening. So organ failure territory. Exactly. It's the step right before a fatal outcome. And for a company like Intelia, whose entire value is tied up in R&D success, a safety halt like this, especially in phase three, it's potentially company ending. The FDA just doesn't compromise on safety. And their whole business model makes them so vulnerable here, doesn't it? They're not selling products yet. No, not really. Revenue is tiny, sporadic, mostly from partnerships like the one with Regeneron. Their goal, their whole story is about making this huge leap, right? Developing these one-time cures using in vivo therapy editing genes right inside the body, moving away from just managing diseases chronically. Precisely. They were pioneers in that in vivo space. So Nix is the lead drug for ATTR amyloidosis is now on hold. But crucially, they have another main asset, Lonvogren Zeclumarin. It's called Lonvos. Lonvos. Lonvos is for hereditary angioedema, HAE. It's also in phase three. And importantly, it is not affected by this hold. Okay, that's key. But this Nexa issue, it sent ripples through the whole gene editing field, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. Because it raises fundamental questions about the delivery method. Intelia uses this proprietary lipid nanoparticle LNP platform. Think of it like a tiny fat bubble that carries the CRISPR machinery into the liver cells. That LNP was supposed to be their edge, their crown jewel. It was. And now it's potentially their Achilles heel. Is this liver toxicity just a problem with Nixit itself? Or is it a fundamental flaw in the LNP delivery system they use for all their liver-directed therapies? That's the terrifying question for them and for the whole field, really. It is. Because if the LNP is the problem, their entire pipeline focused on the liver could be compromised. That's why you saw shares of competitors. Even CRISPR Therapeutics CRSP, which already has an approved drug, Kazgevi dip on Intelia's news. It suggests a potential systemic risk. Before we move on, just a quick reminder for everyone listening, please do like and subscribe to the StockAnalytics.ai YouTube channel. It really helps us out. And remember, if you're a member, you can suggest stocks for future deep dives right there in the comments, and uh, we'll definitely take a look. Yeah, we appreciate the support. Okay, let's shift gears to Chapter 2, Management Evaluation Steering Through the Storm. In a crisis like this, how leadership responds is critical. Intelia's CEO is John Leonard, right? He's got a long history in pharma. Yeah, Dr. Leonard's a serious veteran, 30 years at Abbott, then AbbVie. He was involved with Humira, knows late stage development inside out. That experience is vital right now. So how did he and the team handle the news hitting the wires? I mean, from a crisis communications perspective, it was pretty much textbook. The event happened, they found out Friday. By Monday morning, bang. Mm -hmm. Trial paused, comprehensive press release out, emergency call scheduled. And they were specific about the problem. Very specific. They mm -hmm. stated it clearly. Correct. Grade four liver transaminases and increased total bilirubin. No hiding the severity. 
that transparency is good for FDA relations, I guess. But doesn't admitting grade four toxicity just hand ammunition to the bears? Yeah. Confirm the worst fears. Well, yes and no. There wasn't much room to downplay grade four. But being up front shows responsible leadership. That's absolutely essential if you want to have a constructive conversation with the FDA about you know, potentially finding a path forward. Like maybe changing the protocol, adding monitoring, anything short of complete shutdown. Exactly. They want the FDA to see them as partners in solving this, not adversaries trying to hide something. It maximizes the chance, however small, of finding a mitigation strategy rather than getting a complete clinical hold that kills the program. It's worth noting, too, this management team had already made some tough calls. Earlier in 2025, they did that strategic reorganization, right? Cut the workforce by, what was it, 27 percent? Yeah, a significant cut. They did that to focus resources squarely on NEXZ and Lonvos, and importantly, to extend their cash runway. It was a prudent, if painful, move. So they were trying to be disciplined with capital. Absolutely. You can't really look at standard metrics like return on invested capital for a company like this. I mean, their ROIC is like negative 39%. It's meaningless. Because all the capital is going into R&D. Right. The only return that matters is getting a drug successfully through trials and approved. And right now, that return is looking highly uncertain, at least for next seat. Which brings us neatly to Chapter 3, Financial Analysis, a fortress balance sheet under siege. Okay, the stock drop was brutal. Wiped out, what, $1.3 billion or so in market cap almost overnight. Yeah, the damage was immediate and severe. But underneath that market panic, Intellia actually has a pretty remarkable financial position for a company at this stage, doesn't it? It really does. And that's perhaps the single most important factor in their ability to potentially survive this. Let's be clear. The cash burn is intense. Of course. They're pouring money into R&D. Over $400 million burned in free cash flow in 2023 alone. Operating margins are, you know, massively negative, like negative 950% or something absurd. That's just the cost of doing this kind of science. But the buffer. The buffer is exceptional. They have almost no long-term debt. Mm. And their short-term liquidity is, frankly, outstanding. The key number here is the current ratio, 5.19. Wow, 5.19. So for every dollar they owe in the short term, they have over $5 in easily accessible assets. Exactly. That's what we mean by a fortress balance sheet. It's incredibly strong for a clinical stage biotech. And what does that fortress buy them in this situation? It buys them the most valuable commodity in biotech right now. Time. Their projections suggest that cash runway lasts into the first half of 2027. 2027? That's significant breathing room. It is. Yeah. It means they can meticulously investigate this liver toxicity issue. They can engage with the FDA. They can try to figure out if the LNP platform needs tweaking. All without the immediate desperate pressure to raise more money at these depressed stock prices. Okay, but let's talk valuation. How does this whole impact how you'd even try to value Intellia now? Standard PE is useless. Completely useless. You value these companies using a risk-adjusted net present value model in RNPV. Essentially, you're estimating the future value of the drugs if they succeed, and then heavily discounting that back based on the probability they won't succeed. So it's like valuing a lottery ticket based on the odds. Pretty much. And this grade four event just shattered the previous RNPV calculation for Nexa. The probability of success, or POS, for a drug in phase three might typically be estimated around, say, 60% okay. after this news. That POS likely plummeted to maybe 10%, 15%, perhaps even lower in some models. That sudden massive drop in perceived probability is what vaporized $1.3 billion in market cap. All right, let's move into the second part, chapter four. Market sentiment, from bullish frenzy to bearish panic. Before this crisis hit, Wall Street was Pretty high on Intellia, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Overwhelmingly positive. The consensus rating was a buy, and you saw some pretty ambitious price targets out there, some analysts going up to $111 a share. Sentiment was definitely bullish. And technically, the stock looked okay, too. It did. It was trading comfortably above its key moving averages, the 50-day and the 200-day. Those are important indicators of trend strengths for technical traders. But the pre-market collapse just blew through those levels. Completely obliterated them. Crashing through both the 50-day and 200-day averages on such negative news signals a total violent reversal of the previous uptrend. It basically tells the market that confidence is broken. Now, you mentioned something interesting earlier about market mechanics, the short interest. There were a lot of people betting against Intellia before this happened. A huge amount. The short interest was sitting at 30.32% of the free float. That's over 30 million shares held short. It's a massive number. So the bears were already circling. They were. 
And this clinical hold was basically the ultimate validation of their thesis. They were proved right in the most dramatic way possible. And that impacts how the stock trades after the fall. Absolutely. Usually when a stock drops that hard, that fast, you get some short covering. The short sellers lock in their profits by buying back the shares they borrowed. That buying can create a temporary floor or bounce. Right. But here, because the news was so fundamentally bad and confirmed the bearish view, there's much less urgency for shorts to cover immediately. They might just let their profits run, expecting more downside. So the stock collapses without that usual technical buying support from shorts. Okay, let's look at who owns the stock now. Chapter 5. Ownership Structure. Who is holding through the turmoil? You said it's mostly institutions. Yeah, heavily institutional. Almost 88% of the shares are held by professional money managers, mutual funds, hedge funds, etc. And it's concentrated. Quite concentrated. Yeah. The top 11 institutions own more than half the company, over 51%. And the single biggest holder is ARK Investment Management. ARK Invest. Kathy Wood's firm. They own over 12%. That's right, a 12.1% stake. And Intellia fits perfectly into their core disruptive innovation theme, or at least it did. But now that thesis is seriously damaged. Severely damaged. And this creates a huge risk factor known as selling overhang. If a major holder like ARK decides, okay, the story has changed, we need to reduce or exit our position, their selling pressure could be immense. Because they own so much, their selling alone could drive the price down further and make it hard for the stock to find a bottom. Exactly. It could trigger more selling from others, creating a cascade. It's a significant risk hanging over the stock now. Was there any sign of insider confidence before the crash? Interestingly, yes. A small but notable signal. Just about two months before this crisis, in August 2025, one of the directors, William J. Chase, bought 100,000 shares on the open market for around $1 million. A million bucks. That's not insignificant. No. It shows some real skin in the game from someone on the inside who, at least back in August, clearly believed the pipeline was on track. A small data point, but interesting nonetheless. All right, let's pull this together in Chapter 6, Risk Assessment, When the Biggest Threat Becomes Reality. If we do a quick SWOT analysis now, post-hold, the strengths are still there, right? The underlying science, the other drug lumbos, that strong balance sheet, experienced management. Those are definitely the key strengths remaining. But the weaknesses are now glaring. Still no revenue. The high cash burn is unchanged. And now you have this huge question mark over the lead drug and Nexus and potentially the entire LNP platform due to the safety signal. And the big opportunity. The main opportunity is clearly Lonvo's for HAE. It's still in phase three. It seems unaffected by the Nexi issue for now. And its success could provide a desperately needed pass to becoming a commercial company and generating revenue. That revenue could then fund efforts to fix the LNP issues if possible. While the threat that just materialized is that Nexi could be finished or face a very long, uncertain delay. Precisely. That's the immediate company-specific threat. But there are also external headwinds blowing against them. Like the macro environment. Yeah. The broader economic climate is tough for companies like Intellia. High interest rates are particularly punishing for long-duration assets. Meaning companies whose profits are way off in the future. Exactly. Higher rates mean you discount those future potential profits back to today's value much more aggressively. So even if you believe in the long-term science, the present value shrinks significantly in a high-rate world. It just adds pressure to the stock price. And any geopolitical stuff. There's that too. Things like potential U.S. trade policy changes, talk of 100% tariffs on certain farm ingredients or APIs coming from China. Yeah. That could create operational headaches, potentially increasing manufacturing costs or delaying trials just when they need speed and efficiency. It's another layer of friction they don't need right now. Okay, let's wrap this up. Chapter 7, Conclusion. We started by asking if this amazing scientific promise could survive such a severe safety setback. What's the verdict? Well, the verdict from the market was swift and brutal. The analysis shows Intellia has fundamentally shifted. It's gone from being seen as a promising late-stage biotech on the cusp of success to being a high-risk, special situation turnaround story. The stock price collapse reflects that new reality. It absolutely does. It's rational, given the now almost binary risk profile tied to Nexa and the LNP platform. So recapping the bull case pillars that remain, one, the core CRISPR science is still potentially revolutionary. Two, the second drug, Lonvo's, is still advancing and looks clean so far. Three, that fortress balance sheet gives them financial endurance, that runway into 2027. And four, you could argue management handled the immediate crisis communication well, being transparent, which might help with the FDA. Okay. 
And the bear case reality. The bear case is stark. One, the lead asset, Nexe, is in deep trouble, facing potential termination because of that grade four event. Two, and this is the big one, the safety problem might be systemic to the LNP platform, threatening the whole liver pipeline. And three, they're still playing catch up. Right. Competitor CRISPR Therapeutics already has an approved drug, Cascavi, generating revenue. The pressure is intense. So the investment thesis now really hinges entirely on management's ability to navigate this crisis. Can they figure out the safety issue? Can they negotiate a path forward with the FDA? And critically, can they successfully execute on the Lonvo's program? That's where all the focus has to be. That wraps up our deep dive on the Antelia Therapeutics crisis. It leaves us with a really pointed question, especially considering that heavy institutional ownership. How long will major shareholders like ARK stick with the story now that it's fundamentally changed? And if they start selling, what kind of domino effect could that have? Something for you to think about. And just a reminder, this analysis was generated by an AI system. It's for educational purposes only and really should not be taken as financial advice. Please always do your own research or talk to a qualified financial advisor before making any investment decisions. Absolutely. And hey, if you found this deep dive valuable, please hit that like button and subscribe to Stock Analytics AI. Remember, for just $4.99 a month, you get access to our huge library, 500 deep dive videos covering every single stock in the S&P 500. Plus, coming up exclusively for members, we're tackling the NASDAQ 100 next. And don't forget, members can request stocks for us to cover. Just drop the ticker in the comment section and we'll get on it. Thanks for joining us on the deep dive.